Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! Now, very quickly, how do you receive the anointing? How do you receive the anointing? I'll give us two keys for this service and then we'll pray. Ah, someone's life is changing in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone's life is changing. Number one, pay attention now. The first key or the first platform, the first way we receive the anointing is directly from God through encounters. Please write. Directly from God through encounters. Directly from God through encounters. Acts chapter 10 and verse 36. The first five words. Acts chapter. What is that? 38. My apologies. Acts 10, 38, not 36. Please read for me the first four words as loud as you can. Ready? One to read. One more time. Who anointed Jesus? It tells you immediately that number one, Jesus was anointed. Even Jesus had to be anointed. And it tells you who anointed him. And when you read further, it tells you what he was anointed with. The Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. God can anoint men through encounters. Solomon received that grace for wisdom and an understanding heart through a direct encounter with the God of the Bible. The Lord asked him to make a request and he did make that request and it pleased the Lord that he requested for an understanding heart and not more wealth or the life of his enemies. God gave him an understanding heart like no king had ever had. And alongside that, he gave him riches, wealth, and honor. He woke up in the morning and found out that a grace had come upon his life. You can receive directly from God through encounters. Number two, how do I receive the anointing? The second way, and that is the more general way that scripture allows for receiving the anointing is through impartation from careers of the anointing. Through impartation from careers of the anointing. Not just impartation from anybody. Not just impartation from Christians. Impartation from careers of the anointing. Impartation from careers of the anointing. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7, Paul was speaking to the church in Philippi and he said, even as it is meet for me to think of you all, he said, because I have you in my heart in as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. The last sentence reads, ye are all partakers of my grace. How many of you? All. So it is possible to be a partaker of the grace upon a man through impartation. Ye are all partakers of my grace. Romans chapter 1 and verse 11. Paul speaking again. For I long to see you, he says, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. I long to see you. I desire our contact. I desire to come to you so that I may impart upon you something that helps you to be established. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 27 from verse 18 down to 20. Numbers 27 18 
to 20. Please look up. Write it and please look up. I want you to see the scripture. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit. He already had the spirit. He said, Lay your hands upon him. Reading to 18. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. I love 20. Thou shalt take some of your honor. Put some of your honor upon him. I will always pause to comment on this scripture that honor is transferable. You can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is a grace. The assignment of honor is to make men pay attention to you and value you. If that grace for honor is not upon you, no matter how righteous, how holy, how sincere, nobody will listen to you. Believe me, even if you have what to say. Many of us are great people who have something to say. Intellectually, spiritually, financially, but that mantle of honor is not on your life. Nobody seems to pay attention to you. Please leave that scripture for us. Thou shalt put some of thy honor upon him. Why? That the congregation of the children may be obedient. Loyalty is not the issue of political maneuver. There is a grace that can come upon you. Do you think that, um, I don't like to use the word celebrity. Because believers are not called to be celebrities. We are called to be ambassadors. However, being a true ambassador will require influence. The world calls people who have influence celebrities. Are we together? The difference between a celebrity and an ambassador is purpose. Both of them have influence. But a celebrity has influence without purpose. No assignment to it. While an ambassador has influence that is connected to purpose. Do we understand? But for the sake of explanation, let me use that word. Do you think that it is normal? To have people across a region or a nation or regions suddenly like an individual and become loyal and follow that person not just on social media but you call on nations and they hear you Abba we are not children there is a grace if that grace is not upon you no matter how old how qualified how rich nobody will hear you there is a grace for honor and it will come on someone this afternoon when that grace comes upon you like Gideon, you will sound a trumpet and 32,000 people will come and gather and say, you called us. What do you want to be done? This is the kind of grace politicians should desire instead of many of this nonsense they keep doing around. You see that? But believe me, when you call and men answer, it was more than your voice that called them. It was the grace for honor that called. Parents, if you don't have the grace for honor, your children will disrespect you no matter how no matter how nice you can try every disciplinary action, it will still not work. The grace for honor. Are we together? Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. How to receive the anointing. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. Okay, thank you. Just, just keep it somewhere in front here. Nothing superstitious, just so that it can just soak in the glory, that's all. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of what? The spirit of wisdom. Why would the Bible tell you the dimension of the spirit that came on him? Because he already had the spirit, but he did not have wisdom. And the Bible says, when Moses laid hands on him, among the many dimensions of the spirit that rested upon him was the spirit of wisdom. You know that the Holy Spirit operates dimensionally. Remember Isaiah 11? When you read verse 2, that, that root from the root of Jesse, that branch that comes out, and then the Bible tells us what we call the seven spirits of God or the seven dimensions of the Holy Spirit. And you see that there are seven, but the operation is into four. Number one, the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of dominion. Number two, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Number three, the spirit of counsel and might. Number four, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Seven spirits, but they are 
channeled into four just like the four rivers that came out of Eden what is the key to receiving from God the key to receiving directly from God is your hunger for God write it down please the key to receiving directly from God is your hunger for God and your depth of consecration your hunger for God and your depth of consecration Your hunger for God and your depth of consecration. Blessed are the pure in heart, the Bible says, for they shall see God. What is the key? Please look up. What is the key to receiving from a vessel who is a carrier of that anointing? Number one, honor. Number two, service you are not entitled to receiving any impartation from a genuine carrier of that grace until you practice honor and until you practice service when you read 2nd Kings chapter 3 from verse 9 to 11 2nd Kings chapter 3 from verse 9 to 11 the Bible himself testifies that just read it for the sake of time it says it describes Elisha as the one who poured water on the hands of Elijah that is service he did not just seek Elijah to receive power he was genuinely genuinely concerned about serving him listen let me tell you the truth if God has given you an opportunity to serve in this house whether at a national level as an ESCO or at a state or regional level, I want you to serve the Lord within the time allotted with integrity and truth. Knowing that service is the ladder that promotes men to awesome levels of the anointing. You may have heard me say it in my teachings, I have profound respect for people who serve God and serve me because I know the power of service. You can serve your way into extraordinary levels of the anointing. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us? You can serve your way. The Bible speaking, Jesus himself was speaking. He said, He that gives a prophet a cup of water, he says, shall receive a prophet's reward. In fact, one synoptic account says, He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. That means when God calls you and anoints you, listen carefully, there are rewards that come with your grace. And at the instance of honor, honor is the key that makes for access. Now sadly, I must commend, sadly, that we men of God have taken advantage of these scriptures and we have twisted it and created servitude out of people. We've turned people into slaves with this whole concept of, you know, prophet, man of God. And um, it's sad for the imbalances. However, let me tell you, the reason why very few people receive from those who are anointed is because of dishonor. Our world in a strange way seems to have an affinity and an obsession for dishonor. We trivialize people's sacrifices and make it look as if what is there, you are just lucky. For instance, you can see someone rising in this service. NIS, the person came as an ordinary person and there has not been any promotion where the person has been exempted. There is a grace there. You can't trivialize and say you are just lucky. Every time you trivialize people's sacrifices and the investment of God's grace upon them, you close the door to receiving that grace. 
is why many children do not receive what is on their parents. I would always give this example. If you can get my teaching on honor, please do. The law of honor or any teaching at all. Hallelujah. You will easily find that online. I believe that among the many things God has granted me the grace to do is to help the body understand what we have been missing through this honor. Honor is powerful. It can open you up to untold realms of grace. There are many people today who are poor because they think every wealthy person is corrupt. They see someone who came to this city for instance, maybe with 100 naira or 1000 and within one year, two years, three years, God has blessed them and increased them like Abraham. Now there are some who may have followed wrong ways, but there are people who with the dignity of kingdom integrity have mastered the ways of the spirit and have been lifted thus. And many people will just look at them and say, these guys don't mind these people. And yet the person who is complaining is broke and poor and in need and will not learn. Every time you criticize a grace, you close the door for receiving that grace. There are people who criticize the miraculous. And yet they want to walk in the miraculous. They criticize the prophetic. Now I've told you already, I know that there are imbalances in these things. There are people who have unfortunately delved into extra biblical practices. I know that. But within the boundary of doctrine and scripture, no. Have regard not just for God and his anointing, but for the vessels who have paid the price to carry it. Otherwise, you would not have it. Believe me when I tell you that. Even though Mary was the mother of Jesus, she had to go and join the queue in the upper room to remain there with humility to receive the Holy Ghost. Yet it was the Holy Ghost who got her pregnant. And you think she would have bragged and said, look, before all of you came, the Holy Ghost and the Word both dwelt in me. Yet she had to humble herself. Otherwise, she never would have received the Spirit. She humbled herself and listened to Peter. I hope you know that when Jesus came, because Peter, I mean, Peter was older than Jesus, but come on, he could not have been as old as Mary. Are we together now? How does the mother of Jesus, who carried the word for nine months, you know what it means for the word to be in your womb? Empowered by the Holy Ghost. A visitation from angels. Those are the credentials that would have made her a leader over the 120. But she humbled herself and was listening to Peter and saying, yes sir. And when the Holy Ghost came, he came on her too. There are many people who use the bias of age, gender, human experience, educational qualification to mean just because you are doing well in the secular. Every time spiritual things come, you just pocket your hand and say, is there anything I can receive? No, it is a wrong approach. You don't receive that way. For you to receive in the spirit, there is a law. The Bible says, and without controversy, without all contradiction, it says the lesser is blessed of the greater. The lesser there does not mean the person who is low. It means the person who is in need of that grace. Are we together? Physics teaches us that there cannot be a flow until there is a potential difference. Is that true? There cannot be a flow from point A to point B when they are at the same height. There has to be a gradient. There has to be a potential difference. There are many proud people who cannot receive the anointing because they feel after all what is there. I am also born again. I love the Lord. And they are suffering cheap battles become something that is so difficult. No favor, no grace, no lifting, no revelation, no access. The Lord has gathered us here again for this last time that we will receive something. I have seen people in my life who are carriers of this grace, especially our fathers of faith. And every time I've had the honor to meet them, I don't look at myself and say I'm Apostle Joshua Selman. I have revelations to miracles to this and that. I throw away all of that thing and I humble myself I do not know enough. Let me learn. And with humility I receive. Can I tell you, when it has to do with receiving impartation, it is not only men of God who have anointing. Mama who raised 11 children without begging, 
there is an anointing on her. Forget that she did not go to school. You will be foolish to imagine raising 11 stubborn boys and all of them became great. You think it's just by parental discipline? No. When mama fries Akara and that's what she used to pay the school fees of 11 children, I can tell you it was not just that thing she was frying. There had to be a grace. There are people who have never gotten a job yet you will never ask them for money and yet they'll, and, and they'll be stranded. You who is working will come and meet them and say, please, can I get 100,000? They will enter their room and bring out 5, 5 naira, 10, 10 naira, 50, 50 naira until it matches the amount. There is a grace. So, I'm, I'm not, I'm only initiating the process for you. You must begin to discern people around your life. Some of you may need to call some of your loved ones and your parents now that you have them alive to say, Mama, whatever grace was upon you that made you relocate from the village to the city and yet you did not die, please, here is a seed of honor. Release that grace upon me before you go to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. When I started ministry, even though God was already doing great things in my life, I went and met my parents, my biological parents, even though I had received impartations and blessings from veterans in the gospel, I went to them and I knelt down and I told them, I said, you are my parents. Among the many people who should bless me, you should be it too. I carried a seed of honor and said, no, it's not about big man, I am this. I don't care what the world is saying. You see, let me tell you, we succeed because we are products of many anointings. The blessings of many people is upon us. Are we together? The blessings of many people. Most of you who work here have not been blessed by the privileges that come here. Some of us who are outside of this service have even been more blessed from this service than those who are working here. You know that because those who are working here have trivialized the people that God put there. It's true. There are some of you, even though you are working in the service, you will be surprised to get a passport, to get something can even be hard for you even though you are working there because you have not tapped from the grace for ease that comes within that place. I have been greatly, greatly blessed and I must say this even on a note of thanks. From the time God connected me to NIS right from the days in Kaduna up until today, this is over a decade plus, I have enjoyed, there is no time I have come with a cry for assistance or whatever from the Nigerian Immigration Service that have not seen believers run round. No, I, I thank you. I have to say that. That the things that will take people days and weeks. I remember one time, my first, very, very first um, passport, they swapped my names. They took surname and put, and all of that. And now to, it was affecting me, and I said I didn't want anything so that it would affect me. And to do that was quite a complicated procedure. This and that. But I remember senior executives right from here rallied around and within, I think it was within minutes or so, they had done all of that. It was at the time when Hajj. So there were so many people. Everybody was frowning, just watching people with gallancy taking me from one office to the other. I said, it's not my fault. It's called honor. But let me tell you this. Some of you, you are seated here right now and you have insulted some of the people already. You will change your passport or your passport will expire. You must learn to honor people so that the day that you need help, there will be a memory of your communication for honor. Listen, this is wisdom God is giving you. Are we together? Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim Ruach Elohim 
Ruach Elohim fill this place. Alaba Shalada. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Ruach Elohim. Feel this place. Listen. I can trace moments in my life when I encountered several dimensions of the anointing and I can tell you what those anointings have produced in the life of this man when your coordinator was introducing me yesterday and today he said a lot of wonderful and gracious things and I appreciate it so much I've enjoyed so much honor from NIS and even from many if not all of you who are seated here let me tell you the secret. It's not because of anything we have. The Bible clearly says our sufficiency is not in ourselves. It is of that God who has called us and made us abled. The word abled means empowered. Empowered ministers of the spirit and not of the letter. For the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. There are some of you here who are in ministry. You must desire this impartation right now. There are some of you who are in business financially. Things are down. There are some of you sicknesses and infirmities eating up your body and all of that. I know that we've stretched our time. It's going to be a few minutes and it's going to be a quick walk. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be concentrated. Let your mind be Holy God's fire!